Committee on Finance and Law will come to order. First, calling the roll, Dr. DeMello. Present. Mr. Enos. Present. And Mr. Fiore is present. First item on the agenda is uh, update on our contracted legal services for special education. And this month's report uh, notes that our budget for the year is $50,000. The December invoice was $4,693.43. Total charges for the year to date from July is uh, $20,690.51. And so there's still a balance in the account of $29,390.49. So it is uh, more than keeping pace. Then uh, it also notes services included phone calls, responding to emails from TPS staff, drafting of letters for, fearing, for hearing requests, and reviewing student IEPs. So what, what's the committee's pleasure? Motion to uh, accept the report and place on file. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing on all those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Chair, aye. Vo Chair votes aye. All those opposed, so voted. The next item is uh, bills payable warrant for fiscal year 23 in the amount of $679. $609,078.80. Motion to approve. Uh, second on discussion, Mr. Chairman. Um, on page 16, voucher number 19684, I'd like to be recorded as voting present since I am on the Board of Directors at Pride, Inc. File the motion. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor will signify by saying aye. Aye. Chair votes aye. All those opposed, so voted. Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor. Aye. All those opposed, we're gone. Public School Committee, we're thrilled to see everyone here this evening. Uh, we will begin with the pledge. If you could please join us. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to the public, holy stands one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming? Whose broad stripes and bright stars Through the perilous fight O'er the ramparts we watched Were so gallantly streaming And the rocket's red glare The bombs bursting in Prove through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star spangled then yet wave or the land of the free and the standing for the invocation by Mrs. Fagan. Lord, as we begin this session, let us acknowledge your goodness and mercy and ask your blessings on all our deliberations. We thank you for this opportunity to be of service to our community and to the young people entrusted to our care. And I ask everybody to stand. We have uh, three people we'd like to have a moment of silence for. The first one is Azen Xavier Diaz, who passed away on January 30th. He was nine years old, a student at Mulcahy School, where everybody remembered him as a most kind, honest, and forgiving young man and a true but bright light who was loved by so many. He leaves two brothers and his, his uh, parents, and as well as his grandmothers and several cousins and uncles and countless friends. Please keep that family in your prayers. 
The next one is Nancy Joan Bumba, who passed away on February 9th. She was born in Taunton, um, and she has left behind a daughter. She was very active in government in the city. She served as a secretary to Mayor Rudy De Silva in the 1970s. Um, she, she loved politics and loved local city government. She worked as a D House guidance secretary at Taunton High School in the 1980s and left there to work at Taunton Probate Court. She really had a lot of different interests and most impressive here. And she leaves her daughter, her daughter's husbands, as well as grandchildren. So please keep that family in your prayer, your prayers. And the last one is Aub Audrey Zebrick. Aub Audrey passed away on February 17, 2003, at her residence with her loving family by her side. She was the beloved wife of Joseph Zebrick, and she was also a, employed as a registered nurse. She worked with sophisticated fabrics, eyewear, I care eyewear and Chadwick's of Boston. She leaves four daughters, one of which is Ann Zebrick, who's been a longtime secretary in the Taunton Public Schools, as well as, as three other daughters. She was a grandmother and a great grandmother, and we'd like you to keep um, her family in your thoughts and prayers. So a moment of silence for all these people. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, um, Mrs. Fagan. And roll call, right? <laughs> yes, please. Okay. Mr. Pulowski's absent. Mr. Renas? Present. Mr. Fiore? Present. Mrs. Fagan is present. Mr. Vieira? Present. Mr. George? Present. Mr. Laura? Present. Dr. DeMello? Present. And Mayor mm -hmm. O'Connell? Present. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you. Approval of the minutes of February 15th, 2023. Second, again, motion. second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None opposed, so voted. Thank you. And we have with us tonight Isaiah Wendell from Taunton High School for the Student Advisory Committee Report. Um, as Mayor O'Connell said, my name is Isaiah Wendell and I am on the Taunton High School Advisory Committee. Um, we had a meeting earlier today to discuss the different things that are going on in the high school and we found that March is a busy month. So I'm going to go over a few of the things that are happening. Um, DECA States begins soon. Um, that's, a, that's a big thing. I wish I got into DECA. Um, progress reports for Term 3 close Friday. It's crazy to think that we're already in Term 3, one more term to go, and the 2023 school year will come to an end. Um, boys tournament basketball starts this Friday. I know there's a lot of basketball players within Taunton High School that will enjoy that. Uh, spring sports tryouts begin later this month on March 20th, I believe. Um, there was a meeting that uh, we had with the school committee on February 8th about things going on within the high school. And I'd like to report that the, some of one of our things that we mentioned were bathrooms at the high school, and I'd like to report that they're improved. Uh, they're much they're much cleaner. The janitors worked really hard over vacation. A lot of the bathrooms are open now on all three floors of the high school, so that has greatly improved over vacation. Coming back from vacation, um, our Mr. THS. Uh, can contest is Monday. I know a lot of people like that. I'm looking forward to seeing all the contestants on the stage in the auditorium. Um, as of Monday, Taunton High's World Language Week begins. I'm excited to see all the fun things that happen there. Uh, our first play of the year, Little Shop of Horrors, uh, will be played in our auditorium starting March 31st, followed by April 1st and 2nd. <clears throat> that is all that's going on for this month currently at Taunton High School. Thank you for your time. As always, I appreciate it.
Thank you, Isaiah. Well, that is a lot that's going on, a lot of good, fun stuff that's going on as we kind of come out of the doldrums of winter and jump into spring. So that's exciting times. Thank you. Uh, we are now at public input, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mayor. In accordance with the Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 39, Section 23C, we kindly request that individuals wishing to provide public input sign up in advance. A copy of the regulation and guidelines will be provided upon sign up, and individuals will be asked to state their name and address for the record. The amount of time each registered individual will have to speak will be determined by the number of people who signed the register and will be announced prior to the start of the public input portion of the meeting. Mayor, we have one uh, person signed up, Dennis Pro, 117 Skating Street, and if I may uh, also uh, along with my colleagues, allow uh, Mr. Dennis Pru uh, extended time due to the fact that he's speaking on behalf of the entire group that's in the audience tonight. So uh, if we could uh, allow a little bit more time, that would be wonderful. I think that's very fair. Uh, so uh, Mr. Pru, if you would like to join us at the podium and just state your name and address for the record. Okay. My name is Dennis Pru. I live at 117 Scatting Street in Taunton, Massachusetts. And I'd like to read this on behalf of the Taunton Area Vietnam Veterans Association. And first of all, good evening. Thank you for having us. My name is Dennis Pru and a member of the Taunton Area Vietnam Veterans Association. As you are aware, we are here to suggest that the East Taunton Elementary School be named after Raymond LaPointe. He grew, he grew up in East Taunton and went to casual school and then on to Taunton High School. After Graduating, he joined the Marine Corps at the height of the Vietnam War. We have already submitted a packet of information that we received from soldiers that were with Raymond. They called him Frenchie. We would greatly appreciate you if you would take that into consideration and would be happy to get you in touch with them if need be. They're willing to talk to anyone about this. Vietnam was a controversial war, according to many. Some even would like to, it to be slowly faded out of history. Ask younger people now about Vietnam and some will not even know where it is. Others will say all they heard about it was the protest. Well, Vietnam was a part of our history. It should never be forgotten. We went there to fight, fight against the spread of communism. It was the first time the war was brought into people's homes on a nightly basis. They didn't like what they saw. The fact is, war is war. Our soldiers die fighting for their country, just like all previous wars. Our soldiers fought just as bravely as, again, in all wars. We can't forget the 58,000 that died there, and especially the 13 young men from Taunton that died fighting for their country. They are our truly hometown heroes. Why should Raymond be considered to be named for the school? He went far beyond the call of duty that day, September 10th, 1967. We researched his name on the Wall USA website. On there was a page for people to make comments, and we came across a couple of people that were with him at the time of his death. They both, from the bottom of their hearts, felt that his heroic action kept them alive. We contacted them and received more details and more emails from others that were with him. They all said Frenchie, that was his nickname, just like I'm Frenchie and two of our members are Frenchie too. <laughs> they said Frenchie was quiet, intelligent, a great guy, and a great Marine. Here is what happened during those days in, in September 1967. Their unit was in heavy contact with hardcore NBA, North Vietnamese soldiers, highly tra trained and well equipped. They were in Con Ten, Vietnam, in I Corps near the DMZ. Starting on the 7th, they were hit continuously by the NVA, a Berg Dog, dog pilot, that's a fixed wing airplane, uh, it's a spotter aircraft, had estimated that the enemy numbered between 4,000 and 6,000. This was a force much larger than what the Marines had, maybe four to five times larger. During these battles, the Marines had lost 40% of their manpower. <coughs> between killed in action and wounded. Normally, a unit would be pulled back and, and be reinforced to full strength before it went back out. That did not happen. They remained there fighting for their lives. 
The company that Raymond was with suffered 484 killed and wounded out of 500 men. Raymond and two other Marines manned a machine gun position. After fighting through, through the 9th, they were almost out of ammunition. You can imagine what they thought of all during that night waiting for the next day. They knew they would never go home alive. The next day, their position was attacked by a human wave of NBA, hundreds of NBA soldiers. They used up all their ammo, they used up all their grenades, and they fought hand to hand. Frenchy and his team's bravery resulted in holding back the enemy long enough for reinforcements to arrive. They saved lots of Marines' lives that day, and these Marines that we corresponded with made it clear they were alive because of that machine gun crew's heroic action. All veterans should be respected for their service, but those that go above and beyond their sacrifice, beyond and sacrifice themselves for others and their country need special attention. Again, with all our hearts, we suggest that East Taunton Elementary School be named after Raymond LaPointe, an East Taunton native who should be a part of Taunton's history. His spirit, bravery, courage, and patriotism should echo through the halls of this school to remind all those that attend who he was and what he did for his country. Raymond LaPointe was 19 years old when he died September 10, 1967. And this is on behalf of Taunton Era Vietnam Veterans. We'd appreciate what you can do for us. I'd like to submit this. May I submit this? And also, I have another letter of correspondence from one of the guys, and I won't read it, but uh, it uh, goes on to say, hey, I'm alive because of him, basically. And also, too, he is mentioned in this book, Ambush Valley. Valley. It was, it's a very interesting book. It's tough to read, but uh, it's very interesting. Where do I? I think, it, I think you can give them to Wendy right over here. <coughs> Thank you. Oh, no. <laughs> all right. well, well, thank you, Dennis, and, and thank all um, of our veterans and the supporters who are here this evening. Um, we are really grateful for all of the work that the Taunton Area Vietnam Veterans Association does here in the city of Taunton and all of our other veterans and veterans organizations. One thing that you have taught us and you never let us forget is that you never forget and we therefore never forget. And that's something that's really instilled upon us by you over so many years of all the work that you've done and the connections that you've made in this community and really educating everybody um, about the Vietnam War and what it's like to be a veteran, what it's like to be in war. So, so thank you for all the work that you've done, for all the service and sacrifice and the fact that you still um, continue to serve our community in so many impactful ways. So thank you. Yeah. Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, if I may, uh, Dennis, do you mind introducing the members that are here with you so we understand who's here? Please, at the microphone, please, at the microphone. Dennis, could you go to the microphone, please? That way, yes, there you go. Arthur DuPont, Bob Sylvia, he's the president of the group. Armin LaRue, Frenchy, <laughs> he's our chaplain. Dave Levesque, Frenchy, he's our treasurer. And Chip Metzger, he's a member of the group from early on. He was a Marine over there. Thank you. Yeah, yes, please feel free yeah, to leave. We, we do not expect you to stay for the whole meeting. A motion, so. a five minute motion. Uh, thank you very motion. much. Refer the matter to the administration. Motion for and second to recess. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. None opposed, so voted. Motion for recess. Motion made and seconded to reconvene. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. None opposed, so voted. Okay, thank you. We are now on uh, item E, Taunton Public Schools Safety Presentation.
Superintendent thank you. Cabral. Thank you, Madam Mayor. So I'll, I'll preface this conversation by stating, if you notice on the back of our agenda, uh, we do have an executive session item listed in the event that any board member wishes to ask a um, particular question or wishes to drill down into our security plans. The presentation you are going to hear this evening is a high level overview of the security measures and the work that takes place to keep our students, staff, caregivers, administrators safe while they're in the building. But if you want to ask a particular question related to the plan, uh, after the presentation I would ask that we go into executive session. We have our SROs and uh, Lieutenant Jackson who are here with us that they can answer any particular question regarding our preparations in the event we were to have a serious crisis or a serious issue on one of our campuses. So with that being said, I would like to welcome Stephanie Hoy, the Director of Student Services and Transportation. She helped compile the presentation this evening with the assistance of the Assistant Superintendent for Finance and Operations, Brenda Moynihan, as well as the Director of Technology, Carolyn Blaneau. So they all work together collaboratively throughout the school year to ensure that our staff, students, and buildings are safe and secure for all to enjoy. So with that being said, Stephanie, welcome back. The floor is yours, and please uh, walk us through your presentation. And again, I want to just remind the committee, uh, if there's a question that you ask that Mrs. Hoy doesn't answer, it's probably because it's best answered if we go into executive session. So thank you. Thank you. I'm going to call. Sure. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for giving me another opportunity to come in front of you this uh, after just a short couple of weeks where we talked a little bit about discipline. As you can see, I'm in great company tonight with some wonderful gentlemen behind me. I'm going to really quick just um, introduce all of them to you, but you'll get an opportunity later in the presentation to meet them more. Uh, a couple of them have some words to say. So starting with Lieutenant Glenn Jackson. Officer Casey Holmes, Officer Josh de Oliveira, Officer Brian Chavs, and the wonderful Sergeant Billy Hinault. I can't say enough about these wonderful gentlemen, and if it wasn't for them, um, I don't think you'd see the robust presentation that you're about to see today. There's nothing that we as a public school system do for security and safety that is never run by our Taunton Police Department. I'm very honored to work with them and they have been great in collaborating with everything that you're about to hear. Um, the Taunton Fire Department is not here tonight but I would be remiss if I didn't mention that they are also a large piece of the security and safety that goes into everything we do. Chief Bradshaw is wonderful and is always ready for a consultation. So I want to give him a big shout out as well. So I want to start, you'll hear me talk a little bit over the next couple of slides of there are things that we have been doing that are ongoing and that'll be pretty much slide one. And then you'll hear me talk a little bit about some new things that we have started this year. Throughout the presentation, I'll be talking about the emergency operation plans and I will go into a little bit more detail as we speak about that. But that was a large project that with collaboration of both the Taunton Police Department, Fire Department and myself, along with a consultant that we used to really take a look at all our plans and up to date them. So we will be talking about that. But up, that is, although ongoing is something very new because we did update some of the language in our operation plans as well as some of the information that's in our operation plans. Um, you'll also hear me end and conclude with the new things and future enhancements that we are considering as a school department as we enter the next year. So one of the things that you'll hear about a lot, and we certainly talk a lot about, are our safety drills. They're conducted throughout our school year. I will go into a little bit more detail in a few slides to tell you a little bit about what those are and how we do them. Staff have FOBs to enter all our school buildings, and they have for some while now. What you'll see is, and I think some of you may have this, we have new FOBs now with our photo, um, photo identification on it that is also FOBed. So we are in the process of making sure that all staff also have this opportunity so that when they're entering a building, they also have their photo ID on them as well. 
We have something called the Raptor system. It's located in all our school buildings, but right now Taunton High School is operating it. And basically what that is, is when you come in as a visitor, you were to show your identification. The Raptor system runs the license. It may flag any concerned individuals that we may need to pay particular attention to. So the rest of the schools are receiving professional development on that Raptor system so that it'll be incorporated throughout all our schools. Each of our school building follow the same script, so if, I hope that if you have, especially during the month of March, where you're probably reading a lot to our different schools, our different elementary schools, uh, when you do ring the bell and uh, let them know that you're there for the visit, they are to be asking you who you are, what's your purpose for the visit, and if they can't see you based on your location, they're also look, asking you to look at the cameras so that they have a good look at who's entering our building. Um, all individuals must show photo ID if they are dismissing a student and the people dismissing must either be on an emergency contact list or a parent guardian or we must have some level of permission from our parent guardian that a new person is dismissing. Our exterior doors are something that all principals discuss with their custodians and their staff. All exterior doors should be uh, locked closed, shut at all times, and should never be propped, and that is something that we take very seriously and look through the day as we're going through our buildings. And our school buildings have two-way radio communications um, assigned to any member that the principal feels like would be important in the event there was an emergency, so there's quick and concise communication between the building principal and those members. I did a quick audit of all our two-way radios. We have about 273 two-way radios in our district, um, with the high school being, of course, the one that has the most walkies, more radios. So we have the presence of four school resource officers and their supervising lieutenant. Uh, last year, we ended the year with three school resource officers. This year, we welcomed Sean Peterson. He's not able to be here today, but our um, school resource officers are located two at the high school, one at the middle school, and one that floats throughout the elementary schools. And of course, Lieutenant Jackson supervises them. We also have a Crisis to Go app on all our desktops. You'll hear me talk a little bit more about Crisis to Go as we continue with the presentation. Um, it is something that we will be concentrating our efforts on a great deal as we end our school year this year. I already st spoke about the emergency operation plans and that we've developed new protocols and practices for our emergencies. Each school this year also identified an emergency response team. So in case there was ever some level of emergency, they have their own response teams and each member has a certain um, part in responding to that emergency. So people that may be a part of that emergency response team would be our custodians, our nurses, our administrators, our guidance counselors, school counselors, um, certainly teachers. Uh, they would all be part of our emergency response teams and each principal has submitted their emergency response team to us this year. So we are in the process right now, we're really excited to talk about this a little bit. Um, back in August or September, <coughs> Lieutenant Nichols gave me a call and said, you know, there's something that I really want you to see. It's state of the art, it's something that we feel like as a police department would really enhance the security and safety of response uh, to our buildings in case there was ever an emergency. So um, I, along with another member of the Taunton Public School community, went to the Taunton Police Department with our fellow officers and listened to a presentation regarding digitalizing 3D mapping for all our schools. After we sat through the presentation, myself, Lieutenant Nichols, and others discussed what they felt as though would, be, would this be a good move for the Taunton Public Schools they all very much agreed to this being a good move. I cannot go into grand detail around this, but as 
Mr. Cabral said that we could certainly go into executive session if it was something that you wanted to discuss further. I can tell you that this is in collaboration with Homeland Security and SERPID. And at this time, we have four schools that have on, undergone this process, and we're hoping by the end of the summer or in the end of this calendar year, we'll have all our schools, we'll have this process. So this is very exciting. I think we are, will only be the second district in the state of Massachusetts to have this level of technology. We recently just posted four additional security officers for the high school that we are currently interviewing candidates for these positions. Once we have the new four security officers, we are sending them all to go to school safety officer training, similar to some of the SRO training that's conducted, so that they're all receiving the same level of information, same level of safety protocols, same language. And also, uh, technology at this point is their automated location information is being updated across the district to display 911 dispatch, the school and general location of the call. So if one of our schools was to call 911, that 911 dispatcher would get the school that the call is getting from automatically and where in the school, what location that call is coming from. So I talked a little bit about updating the emergency operation plan. Behind you, there's a flip book. Um, that red flip book over to the left of the doors is what our old emergency operation plans look like. They are located in all classrooms, and the principals or the building administrators have a larger book but with similar information. That all has tabs. And these are part of the topics that are covered in the emergency operation plan. So starting with just telephone directory, incident management. So incident management would be our emergency response teams, who they are at every school, medical response teams, incident command roles and responsibilities. So if there was ever an emergency, what we would have incident command posts and everybody would have a role. The people in that role would typically be the people that are in the emergency response team, along with, of course, the guidance of the Taunton Police Department and other officials. Crisis communications covered in there, critical incidents, including serious injuries, protective actions for life safety, so that would include evacuation procedures, shelter in place, and lockdowns, Med medical emergency, transportation accidents, custody restraining order, abuse or neglect, sexual harassment or assault, any type of suicide threat or attempt, chemical od od odor or spill, odor of gas or gas leak, fire smoke or odor of smoke, explosions, power outage and water leaks, weather-related emergencies, missing persons, protests or demonstrations, possession of a weapon, assault or fight in progress, active shooter or hostile event, student threat to schools, bomb and other threats, unattended suspicious packages, terrorism, and then there are other resources. So in a case of an event, we would have go, go to kits. There's a, an extra tab for Crisis Go and what that looks like in directions, and also a link to our two-way radios, how many radios we have in every school, who should be assigned those radios in the event of an emergency. I only read those to you. Um, as a former principal, I can say, that I was happy that I didn't have to use all those tabs, thank goodness, but there are certain tabs that we refer to pretty regularly. The nice thing about these operation plans is that not only does it descri describe every emergency, but it gives you flow charts. So it really breaks down what your responsibilities are in any of these events and what other people's responsibilities are in these events as well. So we are in the process right now. They will, this um, updated emergency operation plan will be placed on our desktops, but we are also printing them. So what you see that might be circulating, the smaller books will be printed for the classrooms, and then the larger books will be printed for our building administrators. Yeah, sure. So this is the opportunity that I'd love to give you to meet our school resource officers. I know we have Officer D. Oliveira who's going to say some words, but again, I can't speak enough about the important role that they play within our schools, the relationships that they have made with our students. 
Um, I will not embarrass one of our officers, but as a very new director of student services this year, as I was touring college campuses with my oldest daughter um, over the summer, I received a phone call from one of them, and we had a child in distress. What I later found out is that child in distress could have called on anyone, any family member, any teacher, any staff member. That particular child called on this resource officer. They wanted this resource officer by their side through this process. That resource officer showed up on a weekend, left the family, no questions asked, and was by that student's side. So if that doesn't show you what our resources, um, our school resource offices do, I'm not sure I can go into any more detail, but they are truly wonderful and they love what they're doing. We are just so lucky to have them. So I would like to again um, introduce Glenn Jackson, Casey Holmes, Josh De Oliveira, and Brian Shavs, um, and any of them that would like to come up to the podium, please. Thank you, Stephanie. It's been a, uh, a seamless transition this year from, from Kathy Perry. I, she's dearly missed. Uh, we love working with her, but it's been great working with you thus far. Um, in case you don't know what we do, we're basically the New Age uh, Community Police Officers. Um, we act as liaisons between the, uh, sorry, between the school department and the police department. Um, we like to keep an open line of communication with Stephanie and um, also our administrators. You know, they can call us uh, at any time of day. Um, like Stephanie said, weekends, uh, nights, we're always, we're always available. Uh, for anything, so that's that's the basic gist of what we do. Yeah, we uh, so we we're not just uh, a liaison between the police department and the school. We also uh, are involved in a lot of student meetings, student council, um, DECA, mentorship. Um, we're involved in a lot. Like we're very involved in the sports, the athletes, the drama club, the you name it, and we have our we have our hand in it. We're going to. I know the uh, student council from Taunton High said that that was a big thing. We're going to Boston to support them. We went to Hyannis to support them on our on our on our own time just to give them support. Um, we know that Attleboro, uh, Taunton High is playing Attleboro today in the first playoff game. We know that Taunton High is the best wrestling team in probably the whole East Coast. Um, we're very very invested. We're fairly young still in in the high schools and in the school, so we're almost like older brothers to almost five thousand kids. We're very relatable. where they go from there. So very early on in the school year, we met with uh, Stephanie and talked about the two most important things, and that was uh, school safety and building relationships with the students. And I think we, we do a great job in that. Matter of fact, uh, we were walking, Josh and I, downtown uh, just this morning, and we got stopped by a set of parents. Um, they said, hey, don't you work at the high school? My son's a sophomore, and he loves you. And they said his name, and he didn't know the name, but they showed him a picture. And Josh was like, I know your, your son. He's a great kid. He's always in my office. So yeah. that's just, yeah. you know, not, it, it was kind of kind of gave us a warm and fuzzy feeling. But it's it's part of what we do uh, every day, and it's part of what we enjoy. Um, and we enjoy working with Stephanie and all, all the administrators as well. So these pictures right here, this, especially the one on the far right. So Casey reached out to us and said, hey, we do a, we do a public skating with the middle school, Parker. Fifth grade, sixth grade, and seventh grade, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Of course, none of these kids can skate. Of course, nobody from Parker staff can skate. <laughs> so he's like, hey, can you do me a favor? Reach out to the hockey team boys, seniors, and see if they have, a, ask the coach if they have availability and send some of the senior hockey kids over to at least come. So that's Colton Chirales, who's the captain of the Taunton High High School team on the left, and that's Dylan McCaughey on the far right along with Connor McGrath and a few other kids that came, asked permission. I talked to their parents. They said, absolutely, 100%. Channel 5 News came and talked to all of us. They came and helped out the fifth graders, the sixth graders, and the seventh graders on the ice just to watch them skate and, and hang out with them. And it was such a huge moment because the middle school had this big thing of you know these big high schoolers. I'm nervous because that's where I'm going next year. And, and it just showed that, you know, they're looking out for them. They, you know, they're talking to them, excited. Hey, you're gonna have a great time when you come here. It's really just building bridges between all schools and all, all kids. Um, we we love it. 
I don't know if we want to open it up for questions or if you want to wait for me. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Nice meeting you all. So I have two students at the high school, and I keep tabs on Officer Shavs and Officer de Oliveira because my two students, my two children, speak about these two fine gentlemen quite frequently. I usually get a story or two once a week, so um, they do. They have great relationships with our kids. Um, so that is, those are our SROs that we're proud to have. So I want to talk a little bit, too, about our annual safety drills because we touched upon that in the beginning with some of our procedures that we do every year. So our fire drills is probably the one that you are most aware of. Um, we do that obviously in collaboration with our Taunton Fire Department. The first fire drill usually occurs the first week of school and then we have several thereafter. We try to do it on nice weather, but that doesn't always happen. Um, so we do debrief with the Taunton Fire Department after the principals usually do, the administrators, and they usually tell us how quick we were in evacuating, if there were any issues with the evacuation process, certainly recommend um, any type of things that we could do differently in the event uh, that we had a, a real emergency. The next that you probably hear a little bit about is our lockdown drills. Um, and this is conducted also in collaboration with our Taunton Police Department, but also district administrators and our school administrators. So this year we've done something a little differently uh, we are scheduled to have three lockdown drills, and they're all very different. So the first lockdown drill was done uh, sometime around October, and it was your traditional lockdown drill. And that just means that somebody makes an announcement and we go into our protocols. Our second lockdown drill, we decided to do during a, the most inconvenient time of a, a school day, and that's the lunch period. And uh, with a lot of help and research by Sergeant Hinault, who also helped our SROs and Lieutenant Jackson consult with every principal in the building to determine what the safe space would be in the event that we ever did have a lockdown drill during, uh, during lunch or during recess with our younger students. We um, just finished that up right before February vacation. And I am happy to say that things went really well. And our third lockdown drill will be one that will be slightly different. So that will be towards the end of the year. Um, we will be utilizing Crisis Go for that particular um, lockdown. Uh, Crisis Go was introduced to us right before the pandemic, and we haven't had much uh, opportunity to practice with it. So our goal, obviously, is to use Crisis Go more routinely, especially in our lockdown drills. And one of the advantages to having Crisis Go is you can actually communicate with one another during that emergency, so in a lockdown situation. So if a building administrator wants to communicate with a particular teacher or a teacher needs to communicate with somebody in the building, you can do that through the app. So that will be our last drill of the year. We also, at the end of every lockdown drill at every school, we debrief. So we debrief with the building administrators. We debrief with town police. Uh, we have a debriefing protocol that we use. And then we have recommendations that are made after the debrief. Those recommendations go to any of the department heads that we need to in order to either have, find a solution for the issue that we found or maybe change something. So we are ever, we're always looking at ways to improve that process and town police along with our building administrators and um, Assistant Superintendent uh, Moynihan does a lot of that with us because a lot of that is covered under uh, operations. The other, the other drill that we do conduct, we haven't conducted in quite a while, but we are looking to conduct this particular uh, evacuation is the evacuation drills. So that's in the event that something happens on premise and you actually had to evacuate everybody in your building to a different location. The emergency operation plans that have been updated all have the new evacuation sites for each school with contact information, and we they are all approved, ready to go. Um, but as you can imagine, an evacuation drill is a lot of planning. So that is something we're taking our time to take a look at, but it is something that we will be in the near future also practicing. 
And the last evacuation that we do is our bus evacuation drills. That's just as important because our students could certainly be in some level of emergency on the bus, um, and we do those twice a year. So we typically we do those in the fall, and we do those in the spring. I talked a lot about the emergency operation plans, but one thing I have not mentioned just yet is the training component. So one thing that we decided to do a little bit differently this year is work with our consultant who assisted us with the emergency operation plan to also develop training for our administrators, our teachers, and all our staff. That has been conducted, and again, that was shared with our Taunton Police Department along with the Fire Department to really get their blessing to make sure that there weren't any procedures or any language that we were using that might have been antiquated or things that they weren't really recommending us to do. With that being said, um, after that long, lengthy level of communication, we're, we have been successful in uh, obtaining those trainings and we will be discussing with the building administrators how we will be rolling out those trainings. But they're tabletop trainings that will assist staff in understanding some of our procedures, policies, and protocols if there was an emergency. So in addition to everything we've talked about, something also that was done this year that has not been done in the past was we, our emergency response team all underwent well, uh, what's called ICS training, and that's Incident Command Systems Training. And that was done in November. Now, that's not typically given just as in coming from a perspective of an educator or a school. So Incident Command Training, I'm going to be safe to assume all our friends back here have done Incident Command Training. Um, so it's in the event there's an emergency, what that means. Like, what types of things do we need to concentrate, concentrate on? What roles should people have? who should be in these roles. Um, so this information was given to all our emergency response team, delivered through a, a retired state trooper who is uh, very well known and someone who travels actually the United States doing this type of training. And that was conducted during our first professional development day uh, back in November. And we, of course, will continue to have to follow up because this is so much new information to so many of our staff that we do need to revisit a lot of these topics. We talked a little bit about placing our emergency operation pl uh, plan on our desktop, printing copies of the emergency operation plan for all staff, and of course now we need to deliver the training. And lastly, I want to touch a little bit on technology, and I do want to give credit where credit's due, and that's to our Director of Technology, Carol Gleno who and she and her team have worked pretty diligently in trying to do their best with increasing the level of technology um, and also making it safe, using technology to make sure that our students and staff are safe. So one thing that we do have in all our schools, if we, we have something called the A-phone, and that's audio-visual door intercom system. So those are the, the, the monitors that you see and their ability to talk to you and so forth. Um, and then all public schools have the A phone in order for safe, safely identifying any visitors that come into our schools. The other new thing that I think the last time this presentation was done, we had not updated it quite the way it is updated now, but it's network video recorder. And what that basically means is that we have really high, we have a high level of high definition video. And this video is can be saved for at least 30 days. So if we ever have to review a video, look back on a video, um, we can do that. And the imaging is, is uh, wonderful imaging. It's, you can really see who's on the video, and it is really helpful in safety situations. It can be accessed remotely, and the top police department does have access to our cameras with this system. So that's an important feature in the event there was ever an emergency that would be something that they would have access to. So future safety enhancements is something that is really exciting because we've talked so much this year with, about safety and security within our buildings, how we can enhance safety and security for our staff and for our students. So some of the things that we're talking about now um, certainly can go into more detail later, however, I want you to know that some of these things have not been definitively decided on, but are things that we are discussing as a team. 
We're in the process right now seeking quotes to begin uh, building our visitor vestibules and magnetizing our doors. So that's something we're currently doing. So each school would have a vestibule to greet their visitors. We are re reconstructing the Taunton High School security booth and changing the door access to Taunton High School to enter the school so there's more enhanced visibility. So the reason we're doing that is so that our uh, security officers can be looking at the cameras and looking outside simultaneously and the door has been changed so that there's better visibility to the safety booth when you're walking into Taunton High School. We also, our weapon detectors have been purchased and will be installed at designated high school entrances. And these detectors will also be able to communicate with our video system um, and video monitors within our building. We are researching the option of purchasing protective furniture for safety use in the event of a lockdown situation. The district is considering options to provide a direct two-way communication system with the Taunton Public Department dispatch. So that would be that one, per one person could pick up some level of communication and speak into it. If there's an emergency in such and such school, and police dispatch would get that right away. Uh, we are also increasing the number of internal surveillance cameras at all our schools. We continue updating our network infrastructure to protect against cyber attacks. And recently, our technology department is in the process of partnering with Bridgewater State University and their telecommunication department to seek guidance in protecting our infrastructure. So those are just some of the new things that we are working on. I apologize. I know that was really long, but there are a lot of things in the works. And I think it's important for you to all know exactly what um, those are. So thank you for your time and your attention. And I certainly could address some some questions. Okay. Thank you, Mrs. Foy, for that uh, great presentation. I think it really makes people feel good um, about you know the safety of their children in the schools when they see this presentation and understand that Taunton really looks to be a leader in using the latest technology and the latest equipment available to keep our uh, our kids and our staff safe at all times. And it's really wonderful to hear from our SROs who are just creating such great relationships and communication with our kids at the school so that they love being in school, they love the Taunton Police Department, and it, it really uplifts our community. So thank you. Um, anything, uh, Mr. Laura? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, Stephanie, as far as the, uh, the NVRs, the recording, so after 30 days, they re they tape over them or are they stored somewhere in case we need past information? So I'm going to actually look at Assistant Superintendent Morningham for that, but I believe that they are not stored. If I may interrupt, true? I think we should discuss that in executive session okay. at some point. Absolutely, whatever you're more comfortable with. Thank you. That's just a technical question. I wasn't. Yeah, I think it's for the matter of the security. I think we should probably discuss sure. in executive session. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, Mr. George. I just want to thank you guys for that awesome presentation and to the SROs. I appreciate the work you're doing. I think it's really important that you guys are kind of the first line of not defense, but of building relationships so that you know these kids can grow up and have trust in the system and also, you know, grow up knowing the officers that are in their community. Um, and you guys are kind of growing up together as you guys are young as well, right? Um, but overall, I just really appreciate the work you're doing with the kids and being able to build those relationships. And then I have other questions I'll ask in executive session. But thank you all. Mr. Laura. Mr. Fury. Well, thank you. I just want to express some pride. When I served on the other side of government, I had a role in appointing some of these characters. And I'm glad to see they're doing such a good job. <laughs> and uh, Lieutenant Jackson has also done some uh, safety education for some of the classes I've administered at ProHome. And I've been grateful for that. So I. I know what we were getting here, and I'm really pleased to have them in our service as well. Thank you, Mr. Fiore. Mr. Laura. Just to thank you for all you do to protect our students and our system, and uh, please continue working well with them because they respect you, and you have that mutual understanding of each other. So thank you. OK. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. Excuse me, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, thank you, Mrs. Hoy, and to uh, all our SROs and the entire police force. But I just want to revert back to the last sentence of our opening prayer. 
And this is really how I guide myself as a school committee member, and I think all of us around this table. We thank you for this opportunity to be of service to our community and to the young people entrusted to our care. So I take that care as a community effort, and of course, as we have just witnessed tonight, it's very evident that uh, the care and concern of our children goes beyond the buildings of a school. And we heard a story of a weekend incident, and uh, trauma is something that happens in many different ways and forms. And uh, when trauma hits, that, that sense of level of comfort could be an SRO. It's one that's sitting in the audience right now. And I think that's you know very, very important and critical. So thank you so much for all of the uh, all the assistance throughout the day and you know it's it's not just a, a a visual of enforcement in the schools it's a partnership it's role models and I think we all discussed that and I see everybody nodding their head of course it is and we appreciate that so once again on behalf of the school committee thank you so much okay thank you mr. Mel. Um, I, I just want to ask the members it, it is going to be a bit of time before we get to executive session is it necessary to ask our officers to stay here uh, until the end of our meeting for executive session. Either that or you guys could refer your questions for another time and directly speak to the, our, uh, the SROs, but if anyone is interested, we could go out of order and go into executive session right now. So if you have some pressing questions, we can, but if you think that you could address them later, we can I, handle like it that way. I'd like a motion to go into executive session to ask some questions, please. Second. Roll call, please, Mrs. Fagan. Mr. Enos? Yes. Mr. Fiore? Yes. Mrs. Fagan votes yes. Mr. Vieira? Yes. Mr. George? Yes. Mr. Laura? Yes. Mr. DeMello? Dr. DeMello? Yes. And Ms. Mayor O'Connell? And we will return to open session at the conclusion of executive session. Thank you. Business. Uh, may we? Are we ready? Yeah, you're right. Okay, can I get a motion to go back to come out of the executive session? So moved. Second. On a roll call vote. Motion made and second on a roll call, please, Mrs. Fagan. Certainly. Mr. Enos? Yes. Mr. Fiore? Yes. Mrs. Fagan votes yes. Mr. Vieira? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, Mr. George? Yes. Mr. Laura? Yes. Dr. DeMello? Yes. And Mayor O'Connell? Yes. And I will just note that no votes were taken in executive session. Okay, we are now on superintendent's report. Thank you, Madam Mayor. So you're in your packet, you should have received my superintendent's report, which I'd like to discuss four items uh, contained in the report. The first item will deal with Taunton High Winter Sports. The second item will talk about our midwinter February learning academies. I will give you an update on the preliminary FY24 uh, governor's budget and the impact on chapter <coughs> 70 and net school spending. And then lastly, I'll talk to you, I'll share with you an exciting new free program at Totten High School that all our high school students have access to. So first, uh, Totten High School's Varsity's wrestling team has clinched their second straight MIAA Division I South Sectional title. The team's 14 Varsity wrestlers all placed against their opponents from other Division I South High Schools at the tournament hosted by Brockton on Saturday, February 11, 2023. Leading the Tigers was Xavier Sandoval, Ben Mandeville, and Ethan Harris, who all recorded first place finishes during the meet. Sandoval and Mandeville each recorded their 100th career win during the tournament, a feat that required a tremendous amount of commitment and hard work throughout their high school careers. A strength of the Tiger wrestling program has been their depth the past two seasons. Throughout the South Sectional Tournament, the team saw three second place finishes, two third place finishes, and four fourth place finishes and two fifth place finishes. Strength and depth across the student athletes requires a recruitment and passion from team leaders. And wrestling coach Adilson Galveo has shown just that. Athletic director Mark Adivianelli continues to share or show high praise for coach Galveo and his assistance for leading the varsity wrestling program. Tarn High's wrestling program has lived up to its mission more than ever as they continue to develop student athletes focused on the pursuit of individual and team goals who carry themselves as ambassadors in and out of school and throughout our community. I look forward to more results from the high school wrestling team as their 2023 season schedule still holds a state and all state and a New England level competition barring qualification. 
Early February also brought podium finishes and notable highlights from our boys and girls winter track and field teams as the teams competed in the Hockamock Conference Championship on February 9th, 2023. The boys were led by junior Demetrius Sherion, who captured gold in the 300 meter race, a bronze in the 55 meter dash, and anchored a third place finishing relay. In addition, 10 student athletes also contributed toward the team's point total in both track and field disciplines. On the girls' side, senior Kaylin O'Leary earned a bronze in the 600 meter and anchored a runner-up finishing relay team. Seven other Tigers on the girls team contributed toward point collection at the championship meet. meet. Both squads look forward to sending individuals to divisional, state, and national level competition as we round out the winter sports season. I'm also excited to report that we once again held district February learning academies. At the elementary level, and I'll be a little more succinct here, at the elementary level, there was a focus on ELA and writing, using our Wonders Writers Workshop, Scholastic News and Amplify to strengthen skills. Students practiced their skills as effective readers and writers while working in small groups. There was also a focus on math and science. Students and teachers used activities from Math for Love along with Illustrative Math Center and Mystery Science Games to support and extend learning skills. Building fraction walls, dissecting word problems, in competency, oh, I'm sorry, in competing for cryptocurrency while problem solving as teams ignited the students' interest in diving deeper in math and science. There were also enrichment activities that involved creating volcanoes, and there were also incentives. Students and guardians participated in gift card lotteries. <laughs> At the middle school level, again, there was a focus on reading and writing using the ACET writing process. In the area of math, math was Math encompassed working on whole digit, multi digit multiplication and division, along with ratios, rates, and divisions and fractions. Problem solving scenarios were created, which anchored small group activities. Next, uh, I'll spend a little more time going a little deeper with the preliminary budget update. So, last week, educational leaders were given a sneak peek uh, into the governor's FY24 Chapter 70 projections. So on Thursday, February 23rd, 2023, school leaders were provided with a preview of Governor Healy's inaugural budget. The FY24 budget will increase state education aid by nearly 10% from $5,998,209,887 to just, a, just around $6.6 .6 billion, which is an increase of nearly 600 million. So please be mindful to the board and to the public that these figures are preliminary estimates and are subject to change as the House and Senate deliberate on the budget in the coming months. However, these estimates provide, provide at the time will greatly assist the Tom Public School District and other school systems throughout the Commonwealth with our FY24 budget preparations. As we have done in the past, the Tom Public School District, under my leadership and with the support of the Assistant Superintendent of Finance and Operations, we will develop the FY24 budget with the flexibility to accommodate potential changes that may occur throughout the budget, the budget process. The FY24 Chapter 70 program continues to implement the Student Opportunity Act, or SOA, an act relative to educational opportunity for students. The act makes significant changes to the Chapter 70 formula based in large part on the recommendation of the Foundation Budget Review Commission. As a reminder, the Student Opportunity Act establishes new higher foundation budget rates in five areas, benefits and fixed charges, guidance and psychological services, special education, out of district tuition, English learners, and low income students, all to be phased in by 2027. The act also increased the number of tiers used for low income increment rates from 10 to 12. Districts with high concentrations of low income students benefit from the higher rates. Taunton is in the 10th decile out of the 12 deciles. In addition to these targeted rate increases, foundation budget categories also increase the amount for inflation. A new employee benefits rate inflation is applied to the employee benefits and fixed charges category. This is based on the enrollment weighted three year <coughs> average premium increase for all group insurance commission plans. For fiscal 24, the increase is 5.16%. An inflation rate of 4.5 is applied to all other foundation budget rates based on the U.S. Department's Commerce State and Local Government Price 
deflector, deflator, sorry, and capped at 4.5%, which is the maximum set by the Act. So statewide, foundation enrollment increased by 903,000 students in FY23 to 905 students in FY24, an increase of nearly 1,500 students, or just less than 0.2%. Foundation enrollment decreased for 194 districts, while 162 districts experienced an enrollment increase. In Taunton, we saw a gain of about 130, 135 students. Finally, the formula's minimum aid pro provision guarantees all districts receive at least the same amount of aid for fiscal 24 as they did in fiscal 23, which was $30, $30 per pupil increase. Taunton Public Schools FY24 budget, foundation budget enrollment, again, increased by 135 students, just under 2%, from 7,940 to 8,075. Overall, the Taunton Public Schools foundation budget increased by nearly $12.7 million, just under 11%, from $118,792,148 in fiscal 23 to $131,396,476 dollars for fiscal 24. The City of Taunton's required contribution increased by 2.3 million or 5.9 percent from 40.1 million to 42.4 million for fiscal 24. The City of Taunton will receive in the form of Chapter 74 aid, so again, the City of Taunton in the form of Chapter 74 aid will receive $88,928,648 in the form of Chapter 78, which is an increase of $10.3 million from Fiscal 23. All the funding components on which the Taunton Public Schools Fiscal 24 Foundation budget was calculated increased, raising the per pupil funding from, by $1,319 to $16,272 in Fiscal 24, versus $14,953 for fiscal 23. So based on the formula, of the $16,272 that the city, the Taunton Public Schools spends on students, to educate students, $10,600 we receive from the state in the form of aid, $5,700 is the city's required share. For preschool, we saw an increase of $414,000. So we did see a substantial increase in our preschool numbers and also in our elementary enrollment numbers. So preschool increases by 414,000. Elementary increased by $2.1 million. Our high school increased by 569,000. Special education in district saw an increase of 633,000. To educate students, uh, EL students in our pre-K through five programs, we saw an additional 98,000. To educate our L students at the high school, 138,000. Full day kindergarten saw an increase of 135,000. Our middle school saw an increase of 974,000. Vocational, which is something that this committee has invested heavily, not only to offer students or to engage students at the high school, but also as a means to generate additional chapter, 70, chapter 74 dollars. We saw an increase of $2 million. Special education tuition increased by 200,000. To educate uh, Middle school L students, we saw an increase of 59,000. And because we're in the 10th decile out of 12 deciles for low income students, we see an increase, or we will receive an increase of $5.2 million to educate uh, the students in, the, in that, that qualify in that category. So again, these are estimates provided and are subject to change as the House and Senate deliberate on the budget. However, the preliminary estimates are critical in assisting cities and school districts with the budget preparations for fiscal 24. DESE will issue the final official school pending requirement as soon as the governor and legislator approve the FY24 budget. So based on these projections, this will be the floor that we will begin to build our budget, uh, knowing that things may increase or things may decrease, but these will be the figures that Mrs. Moynihan and I will use when we construct our budget. And uh, I plan on reaching out to the mayor, the budget director, and the CFO in the near future to discuss uh, the fiscal 24 appropriation that the school, that the school department can expect to receive uh, moving forward. And obviously, uh, we want to make sure that we maintain 100% net school spending. And last but not least, uh, I'm, I'm very excited about this online tutoring or online support program that's free to all students, 24-7, one-on-one tutoring 
uh, in all subjects for students 8 through 12 at Taunton High School. So Taunton High School Principal Scott Holcomb and Taunton Alternative High School Principal Robert Delaney and I are thrilled to announce that the Taunton Public School District has partnered with PAPER to provide high school age students with free 24-7 access to one-on-one -on -one tutoring and writing support for all students in grades 8 through 12. PAPER's educational support system will provide students and their caregivers with the following academic support. One-on-one -on -one live, live chat tutoring sessions with subject matter experts in over 200 subjects in four different languages. Expert review of any written work, including essays, creative writing, poetry, lab reports, etc. Hundreds of resources and activities to help you best support your student at home, and also interactive shows and activities to expand student learning beyond the classroom. So with the late buses, what we're also seeing is some students staying after school uh, and utilizing paper before they hop on the late bus at 4.30. So this is a great one-on-one -on -one tutoring support that I'm happy to provide our students. So with that, uh, that concludes my superintendent's report. If you have any questions regarding fiscal 24, I'd be happy to do my best to answer them. But if you have any other questions regarding my report, again, I will entertain any questions at this time. All right. Thank you, Received and placed on file. Second that. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. None opposed, so voted. Administrative business, Taunton Public Schools teacher vacancy update. So I see this is simply an update. Uh, is there any discussion? Uh, if there are any questions, I'd be happy to entertain them. But I believe we are still sitting or holding firm with, uh, with 13 uh, vacancies. And I just want to remind the school committee and the public that we are hosting a job fair on March 16th. School committee members, you are welcome to attend. And if you'd like, we can even set up a school committee table. Received and placed on file. Second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None opposed, so voted. There is a field trip request also. Uh, Superintendent Cabral, would you be speaking to that? No, just asking that the school committee, uh, after reviewing the field trip that you authorize chairperson uh, Dr. DeMello to sign off as the chair. I have reviewed it, Mr. Barada has reviewed it, and we believe that everything is in good standing, and we ask that the school committee approve this field trip. Motion to approve. Chair. Second. Motion made and seconded on discussion, Chairman. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I just have a few questions, and I caution my members uh, to please pay particular uh, attention to the transportation provider. Initially, was students would be providing their own transportation, and now it's transportation will be provided by Taunton Public Schools. Could you please identify what that means? Yep, so uh, when this field trip request was brought to my attention and Mr. Barada's attention, uh, one of the items that we sh quickly struck was that we did not feel it would be appropriate for students to, to drive themselves exactly. on this trip. So we are going to contract with h &L Bloom and make sure that the students and the chaperones are transported safely to and from this field trip. Okay, thank and you. And Taunton Public Schools will cover the cost. Thank you. And, and as other field trips, we usually have that clarified that it's h &L Bloom being the provider and it's not here, so that drew my attention immediately. So under the condition that it will be h &L Bloom, I would ask for the vote, Mayor. Okay, motion and second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None opposed, so voted. Thank you. Thank you. New business, uh, Bennett Elementary School Sewer Connection. So in your packet, uh, you should have a memo. Uh, to me from Director of Facilities. You skipped over. You skipped over subcommittee report. Did I? Yeah. You did. Oh. <laughs> okay, I'm not trying to hurry us along. Uh, <laughs> subcommittee reports. Finance and Law Subcommittee. Mr. Fiore. Thank you, Madam Mayor. The Finance and Law Subcommittee met this evening with myself, Dr. DeMello, and Mr. Enos. The first item on the agenda was uh, a statement of uh, the special education student services uh, legal bill uh, and actually is a little more up to a little more detailed than usual uh, this is for the law firm of Lyons and Rogers our budget for fiscal 23 was fifty thousand dollars the uh, invoice for December 22 was four thousand six hundred ninety three dollars and forty three cents total charge for services rendered year to date since July was uh, $20,690.51. And so for the last half of the year, uh, there's a balance of $29,390.49. So uh, the charges are actually behind where the, the budget is, which is what we're looking for. They also note that services include phone calls, responding to emails from uh, staff, drafting of letters for hearing requests, and reviewing student IEPs. Then uh, we also had a bills payable warrant for fiscal 23 in the amount of 
$679,078.80. Motion was made and seconded to approve with Dr. DeMello asking to be recorded as present on the uh, item uh, invoice for pride on whose board that he serves. And uh, with that, the committee adjourned. Motion to accept. Yes, second. second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None opposed, so voted. Long Range Planning Subcommittee, Mr. Vieira. Thank you, Madam Mayor. The Long Range Planning <coughs> Subcommittee met on Monday, February 27, 2023, at the Elizabeth Pohl Elementary School. Members are myself, Mr. Enos, and Mr. George. Members of the leadership team that were present were Superintendent Cabral, Assistant Superintendent Monahan, and uh, Mark Freitas, Director of Facilities. The first item discussed was the Taunton High School Culinary Kitchen expansion, outdoor dining area, and food truck. Mr. Freitas shared with us several schematics of the proposed changes to the commercial kitchen located at the high school. The schematics contained architectural design changes to the kitchen area as well as the addition of a freezer area. A uh, motion was made by Mr. Enos to accept the proposal and authorize the administration to move forward with the work in a timely manner due to the funding source. Motion was seconded by Mr. George. All three members voting in favor. The second item discussed was the Taunton Alternative High School copper paneling system. For those of you who don't remember, um, part of it blew off in a windstorm. It's something that uh, we're looking to get addressed. Similar to the previous item on the agenda, Mr. Freitas shared and discussed several quotes he solicited to repair or replace the copper paneling system around the top of the alternative high school. After a lengthy discussion regarding the cost, scope of work, multiple options, Mr. Enos made the following motion, which was seconded by Mr. George, with all three members voting in favor. It's to authorize the administration to seek an opinion from a licensed architect, identify the most cost-effective solution and materials, and to replace the existing copper paneling system, and to discuss the findings further and the recommendations at a future school committee meeting under old business. The third item on the agenda that was discussed was the capital improvement plan. It was the same plan that was uh, presented to us in December. Um, Ms. Moynihan shared that with us. Uh, for FY23 uh, playgrounds at Joseph Chamberlain Elementary School, East Taunton Elementary School, Galligan Elementary School, E. Pole Elementary, and the Tiger Tots um, were prioritized. We also add the Taunton High School Commercial Kitchen patio food truck, as well as surveillance camera upgrades, resurfacing of parking lots and roadways, and uh, purchase inventory management system, which will be used uh, in the warehouse. For FY24, um, we removed, replaced the Bennett septic. That is coming up next, so I won't steal the superintendent of the Mayor's Thunder on that. Uh, renovation to the third floor located at Taunton Alternative High School. Uh, additional surveillance camera upgrades. Again, more parking lot and roadway, repaving and resurfacing, as well as uh, replacing uh, the groundskeeper vehicle which, I, again, I think is going to be prioritized higher. Um, FY25, we removed the gym floor resurfacing, again, for the same reason. After a lengthy discussion regarding the various capital improvement topics listed, um, Long Range Plan and Subcommittee encouraged the administration not to wait to act swiftly to replace its fleet of vehicles as ESSER funds are one-time fund that will expire. If they're not used within the mandated time frame, Long Range Plan and Subcommittee also authorized the Administration to Act on replacing the gyms uh, at the Bennett Elementary School and the John F. Parker Middle School immediately, again, as these two items would also be ESSER eligible. Mr. Enos' motion, seconded by Mr. George, to accept um, the capital improvement recommendations, including replacing the gym floors, as discussed with ESSER funding prior to 25, all three members voted in favor. The meeting adjourned. That concludes my report. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Motion. motion to accept the, um, the, the report with the exception that Mr. DeMello and Mrs. Fagan was also at the meeting. Okay. Yes, correct. They were, they were present at the meeting, correct. Accept the recommendations. Accept yeah. the recommendations. Adopt the recommendations. Accept the report. Accept the report. Accept the report. Yes, Second on that.
Motion and second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None opposed, so voted. Okay, now we have new business. Uh, the Bennett Elementary School sewer uh, connection, and there is a letter on the agenda. So uh, I'll share with you the letter that I received from Mark Freitas, who is the Director of Facilities and Operations for the Tom Public Schools. So the Edmund H. Bennett Elementary School septic is nearing its end of life. Due to its current state, we have contracted with a local vendor to have the system pumped as needed to ensure the school remains operational. Knowing that this was a band-aid approach, members of the school department and city building department representatives met regularly to discuss a long-term solution. Before the midwinter break, the City of Taunton Chief Financial Officer, Patrick De La Russo, informed the school department that after a thorough analysis, it was determined that the best option would be to connect the school to the city's sewer system. This greatly relieves the Bennett Elementary School community and the Taunton Public Schools, as it costs the school department approximately $1,400 to pump the system each time to ensure that it's functioning for the students, nearly 300 students who occupy the building. As a superintendent, I am very grateful to the city of Taunton, the mayor, the chief CFO, Mr. Enos, who also serves as the budget director, for their work to ensure that the Taunton Public School, uh, that the Ben Elementary School will be connected to the city sewer system. We anticipate better service and fewer maintenance concerns due to the, city, the school being connected to the city sewer system. Lastly, while the school department will no, no longer be required to have the system pumped annually, there will be monthly sewer char charges that we will need that will need to be budgeted beginning fiscal 24. I have provided you with a five-year history of sewer charges for schools similar in size to the Bella Bennett Elementary School. So again, as the project gets underway, Mr. Freitas will provide us with updates. And again, I'm very grateful to uh, the mayor, Pat Mr. De La Russo and Mr. Enos, as this is a $1.5 million project that will greatly benefit the students and staff at the Ben Elementary School. I believe it will also benefit some of the residents uh, uh, who happen to be, live along the way. And uh, again, it's, it's long overdue. And I, again, I cannot express my gratitude to those who did a lot of work behind the scenes to help this come to fruition. So thank you. You're welcome. Okay, we can move on to East Taunton Elementary School naming request. And of course, we heard uh, from some of our veterans earlier in this meeting. And I think we, uh, there, it would be appropriate to have a motion to refer this matter to Council of the Whole. Is Committee it? of the Whole. Committee of the Whole. Wrong, wrong uh, board. Yes, I'd like to make the motion to refer to Committee of the Whole. Second. Seconded. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Not opposed, so voted. Who seconded? Gil, I think. Thank you. Jay, unfinished business action item updates, evaluation of the superintendent. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, this uh, report out is long overdue as uh, we kept carrying on, but uh, of course, compiling uh, eight school committee members' thoughts and comments uh, does take some time. And uh, Secretary Fagan takes a lot of credit of composing the narrative that I'm about to read. Of course, uh, with my assistance, but I'd like to give credit to Secretary Fagan for most of the hard work. So if I may, in reviewing and evaluating committee members' statements, it is clear that overall, we are very content with the performance of Superintendent Cabral. His attention to details, his involvement with the Massachusetts Association of School Committees, this participation in the Urban Superintendents Group has made him instrumental in endorsing various programs that have been effective in addressing the diverse needs of our students and creative use of grants and other pockets of funds has been a direct benefit to our students, schools, and community at large. The annual budget process, the focus on evaluating student achievement, and how well negotiating collective bargaining agreements with all our union employees were cited as outstanding achievements. The committee was also pleased with the continued advocacy of his uses in technology, especially expanding enhanced security measures throughout Taunton Public Schools, while also exploring and reimagining cybersecurity. There were a few areas where members felt some improvements was needed, including DEI, diversity, equity, and inclusion, training, the need to support our younger teachers, and taking steps to ensure that our veteran teachers are also retained. Some felt that we need to improve communication with families and community stakeholders and to address family and community concerns in a timely manner. There was also a recommendation that we prioritize the vision of what education is supposed to be. 
we need to categorize priorities by what are the most pressing needs we have. There was a total of 168 possible responses to the state standards. There were four ratings, exemplary, proficient, needs improvement, and unsatisfactory. Superintendent Cabral garnered 61 exemplary, 100 proficient, and seven needs improvement ratings, as indicated that there is always room for improvement. Given the difficulties of the past year, Superintendent Cabral has had a challenging year, as the entire school department has, and we commend him for his hard work and due diligence. So that is the best that we could do to compile the various notes and memos that we received. And of course, uh, it's always difficult to publicly interview someone uh, for their job. And I think we did a heck of a job, and I think Superintendent continues to do one heck of a job for our students and staff here in the city of Taunton. Thank you, Mayor. Okay. Thank you. So do you need a motion to accept I, that would this? Be or? That would be a Motion to accept the evaluation of Superintendent Cabral. Second it. Motion in, second it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None opposed, so voted. Taunton Public School. If I could just have a quick oh, comment. Excuse me. Sure. Uh, I, again, I just want to thank the committee uh, for the very the thoughtfulness that was given or placed in conducting my evaluation. Mm -hmm. And I also want the committee to know that um, based on the evaluation, I've already established goals, met with the leadership team, met with the principals. So we are well ahead of pace to make sure that whatever needs were identified that the Taunton Public Schools under my leadership, that they are addressed in a timely manner. Thank, thank you, you Superintendent. Okay, next is J, uh, number two under J, Taunton Public Schools District Surplus Materials Revolving Accounts. Superintendent yeah. Cabral. Yeah, just a memo that was provided to me from Assistant Superintendent Moynihan regarding the creation of the revolving account where we will deposit surplus funds. So I believe at the n and in our next quarter three, or upcoming quarter three uh, revolving account, you will see a facility, facilities maintenance line. I'm not sure if we'll have any funds deposited yet, but there may be, but we did get the approval from the school committee. I believe the approval has already been established on the city side. So we now have a new revolving account where we can deposit funds from materials declared surplus that have been sold on the city's auction website. Okay, thank you. So just informational, no votes needed, I believe. If there's no questions, we will move on to the next agenda item, which is committee of the whole meeting to review NESDAQ report recommendations. Mayor, if I may, uh, a motion will be in order to refer this uh, report to the Committee of the Whole to a future date. So be it. Second. Second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor? All right. Aye. Opposed? None opposed. So voted. Uh, any uh, action item? Y yes, Updates Mayor. that need to be discussed? Okay. Uh, I believe that uh, completion of Superintendent's Evaluation Report uh, dated January 4, 2023 can be removed from the list. So move. Well, are there any others or is that it? Uh, I think that's the only one to be removed. I do have a question on one of the items. Okay, motion, motion made and seconded on discussion? Yes, Mr. I'm sorry. Oh, no, well, all right, so you have another item that's separate and apart from that? Yes. Okay, motion made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. None opposed, so voted. Mr. Th Chairman DeMello. Thank you. Uh, the only other question here, uh, renewal of public relations contract request for proposals. Uh, where do we stand on that, Superintendent? Uh, we'll have the summary, uh, we'll have, we have the RFP, we have the tool, we just need to conduct the evaluation and bring it back to the committee. So this is the first meeting in March, we'll have that the second meeting in March on the 15th. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. You're welcome. And next would be executive session. We did that. Would you like to make that? Actually, we did that. We, oh, we, oh we, I thought there was another piece to we it. Won't, we, won't no. need, we won't need it this evening, Madam Oh, Mayor. okay. All right, so there is no press here. I will take a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion made and second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? None opposed. So voted. Thank you very much, everyone. Good evening. Thank you.